Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, it is Tuesday night when I'm recording this or Tuesday evening, so if it looks a little bit dark out, that's, that's why. Um, so I hope you're all doing really well today and that you're feeling um, all right about the online formatting of things. Um, I've been learning still a little bit. I figured out for recording on YouTube, I actually can turn my phone horizontally and that is going to record it better. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that last one. Um, I've also made some adjustments in how I'm personally organizing my things, like using folders. So I've got this, um, I've totally got this folder and another one with palms on it um, just to, to keep me organized. I don't usually have written notes for things, but now that we're doing this sort of format, um, I've been keeping these like class plan kind of notes in those folders. Um, so I'm actually having to adjust how I physically keep track of things and it is different. So I hope that you're kind of figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with week 10, day two. So this is Wednesday, March 25th. And last time we talked a little bit about the research paper, um, what a college research paper is, what's expected. Um, we've talked about you can choose your topic and I gave you some instructions on what you, what you can choose and what I prefer you didn't choose or what I'm not going to um, approve basically, uh, uh, as well as what I expect for brainstorming, which is gonna be due on Sunday. So today, I wanna talk first about developing a research plan. So it's great to say, all right, I'm gonna do a, a five page or whatever research paper about this topic. Um, but after you choose a topic, you do kind of need to, to plan because research is really involved. It can take a lot of time and effort. It isn't just you reading something and responding to it or regurgitating it necessarily. It's uh, you're looking at multiple sources, thinking about your own experience, your own biases and things just as before but it, it's very different now. Uh, so first of all, with developing a research plan, uh, number one, brainstorm topic ideas. So maybe you have an idea already of what you wanna do. Maybe you're very strong in that idea, or maybe you're still between different ideas. Either way's fine when we are at that point, like for brainstorming. So, once you have some topic ideas, some things that you could put in the brainstorming or afterwards is fine just once you get started, think about what you already know about the topic. So what do you already know about whatever it is you're thinking about writing about? I suggest picking something that isn't completely new, completely difficult, like if you don't know anything about the theory of time travel, for example, or I don't know, the speed of light, whatever it is, like you don't know anything about that and it's something you're newly interested in, don't make things harder on yourself. I remember doing that, like thinking about all these things I knew nothing about that I thought were sort of interesting, thinking I would challenge myself by doing that. And it just makes things unnecessarily difficult. Plus, maybe you don't really know that you're that interested in it at first, and then you get bored and the whole thing's gonna fall apart. So we want something that you're at least familiar with, that you maybe know a little bit about, that you're already kind of interested in. So think about what you already know. Second, what do you want to know? One of the greatest things you can do to start for your research paper is take down some questions. Why are you interested in the, in the topic? What is it that you want to know? What do you think other people are going to want to know about your topic? 
And third, recognize your biases. So we are all biased. That's just part of being human, right? We all have our own experiences, beliefs, thoughts that play into why we think how we do. So everybody, even professional researchers, like we all have our own biases. So it's good to acknowledge that so that then you can move on. So rather than being like, I'm going to be totally unbiased doing this research, first think about realistically what your biases are. So those are the, the three things like while or right after brainstorming your topic ideas that I suggest doing. The second thing in developing a research plan is doing preliminary research. So preliminary research is like research that is maybe less formal. Maybe you're very much just skimming through different sources, seeing what sources are out there. So you know um, that there is enough information out there. You're figuring out where to find that information and learning a little bit more about your topic. So if you're between three different topic ideas and you perform some preliminary research, maybe that will help you determine the best route to go. Maybe you um, decide not to do a research project on one topic because it became boring very quickly. Uh, maybe the, the language as you read about it, for example, like with time travel or something, maybe that just is not going to, to be realistic. So doing preliminary research can be really, really helpful before you fully decide on what your topic is going to be. All right, third in developing the research plan is choosing your topic. So actually deciding this is what I think is gonna work best. This is what I'm gonna stick with. So when you choose your topic, then you should acknowledge your audience. So who is going to actually be reading your paper? So for this class, I want you to think of it as a general audience. So maybe with some topics, it might be something that a lot of us might know something about. For other topics, we may know very little about what you're explaining or writing about. So just know that you're, you're writing for me and for your peers, um, not necessarily for somebody else in that, in that field. All right, context. Please consider context. So we've talked about context in class, but as a reminder, um, for context for a research paper, you should be thinking about the social context of your topic, um, what is going on currently, or what affects people's mindsets and ideas about the topic. So socially, what, where are we right now as a society thinking about a certain topic? Um, historically, what kinds of historical things maybe play into why we think how we do about a topic? Um, so anticipating your audience as well as your own biases. So there's, there's all that <laughs> involved in choosing a topic. The fourth step in the research plan is actually doing the research. Uh, doing the research doesn't just mean finding sources and reading them and then jotting down. I mean, yeah, you're jotting down what you read, but um, not just reading it. Um, you're actually note taking. I want to focus on note taking next week and I'll try to put out some resources or videos about note taking, um, but taking very careful notes. When you have more than one source, which you're all going to have at least three sources for this research paper, it can be very difficult to keep track of what information you're finding where. So it's very important to have careful notes and I'll show you how I take notes um, but really just keeping things organized is super super important 
while you're doing your research. Uh, along with that is evaluating your sources. That's the next thing we're gonna be talking about. Um, so during your research, you're looking at the sources, making sure that they're reputable, that you want to use them, and that you're taking careful notes as you, as you go, as you read. Um, for me, taking notes, part of that is keeping track of the citations. So maybe I wanna put down um, where, like what page number or the author I got the information from. Step five, outline. You create an outline. Uh, outlines are super important and I think kind of easier for me personally to do an outline for a research paper. Uh, it's nice to have a plan and also it helps you see where your blank spaces are. So once you think you're done and then you can have an outline and go back to it and realize like, wait, how does this thing connect to this other thing, or I still need this or that information. So outlines are super helpful. Um, and then you'll, you'll fill in the blanks and then continue on, you know, we'll do the draft and the peer review, um, taking feedback and making your edits. All right. So that's everything I have about developing a research plan. If there's a particular thing that works for you and you'd like to share, please comment on the video below, or you can go into our discussion boards and begin a thread there. Either way is good. I'm gonna take a break, take a drink. <laughs> Get that vitamin C. <laughs> All right, so that was all about developing a research plan. The next thing I wanna talk about today is evaluating sources. So we mentioned a little bit about this last time. So you are going to have three sources at least. Um, those sources can be variable. So you may have a source that comes from a .org. You might have another source that comes from an interview, and maybe another source that you got from an academic journal article. So you could have a variety of types of sources. Um, like I mentioned last time, everybody's gonna have a little bit different of a variety. Some people may have mostly academic journal articles, maybe they'll have three or four, academic journal articles, and maybe they'll have an interview. Maybe they decide, you know, I've got this connection over here. Maybe you know a professor that you could interview about a specific topic and bring that in. For other people, they may mostly have magazine articles and maybe like one .gov thrown in, two interviews. It's gonna be variable. So it's important for us to evaluate our sources no matter what type of source they are. So if you are doing an interview, make sure that whoever you do an interview with that it actually makes sense to ask them about the topic. Think about why you're asking them about the topic. Um, I, I've performed a lot of interviews um, during college, especially I did uh, a lot of journalism and things so if you have questions about how to perform an interview or you want some help with that um, please let me know i will also do my best to get you in contact with somebody so as you as i see your topics i will point out like hey i know someone who does this or that i can set you up with them um, and of course that would be through email or through phone um, all right so in evaluating sources if you're using uh, print sources, so anything that is written, or maybe you want to use a YouTube video, that's sometimes fine too, or a podcast, whatever it is. Uh, the first thing is to check the publisher. So if you're on a news site that is not reputable, uh, you don't want to don't want to use one. Maybe you see an article that's from a news site that you've never been on, you've never heard about. You probably don't want to use that. Um, 
is it self-published? Like has someone published something on their own blog? And you know, there are some other factors that play into that as well. Um, check the publisher, all right? And we can, I, I'm more than happy to, to help with any questions you've got about that. Um, so see, what is the site? You can look on um, their about page, that sort of thing. Uh, number two in evaluating sources is check the author. You can Google a person and figure out, uh, are they really an authority on that topic? So maybe I could learn something about physics and be able to put something together and share it, but I would not be the most reputable person to interview or to, to take their written blog post or whatever and use that as a source if you're writing a paper that has to do with physics. That is not my area. I don't have a degree in physics. I don't do anything with physics in my job. There's nothing really there. Um, so check out the author. Anybody can publish anything, right? You can self-publish, which I think is a great thing. I'm not talking down about self-publishing here, um, but you really wanna check out the author. See what information you can find about them. Next, the tone and language are something to pay attention to. When you're listening or when you are reading a source, think about how it's coming off. Do you notice maybe any um, any aggression there? Is there comedy? Just notice the tone of what you're reading or listening to. Um, is the language appropriate? Is it like uh, not super obnoxious? Is it professional? Do they know what they're talking about? How do you know that they know what they're talking about? So just notice the tone and language. You might be able to recognize an author's bias through their tone and language there. And then fourth, who's their audience? If you are on a .org, who is that organization catering to? Do they have an agenda, a bias? Uh, if you're on a .gov, .com, the same sort of thing. Who is their audience? And you might be able to tell that by first of all, checking the publisher, and then you might also look at the tone and the language that they're using to see um, maybe who they're catering to. The last thing in evaluating sources that I have is cross-referencing. Cross-reference the source that you're looking at with other sources. If you're finding patterns, so through the finding patterns through different sources, like a lot of reputable people are saying the same sorts of things about a topic, it's probably important, probably something that you will want to look at and use in your paper. If there's a pattern and then one thing somebody says doesn't fit in with that, that's something to question, take a look at it. Do they really have a point to be considered seriously or do this kind of come out of nowhere? Like where is that coming from? So cross-referencing, finding patterns is also really good to do. Okay, so that was evaluating sources. Um, that's all for the lecture portion. Um, developing a research plan, evaluating sources. Please comment below, email me right on our discussion board if you have any questions about that. Uh, so to do things that I very strongly suggest you do. First of all, get on our resources tab on Blackboard, go to Writing Assignment Help to Unit 3. Under there, there are several videos, and I would like you to watch um, three of them. 
So the first one is how to write a college research paper. That one's very good. These are all very good, but watch that one. Uh, how to evaluate sources and evaluating sources for credibility. Those three videos. And you can also look at my brainstorming examples there. And again, it's just an example. It's just some ideas of if I were gonna do a research paper, um, it's kind of what I would turn in for brainstorming. And then the, the next thing that I would like you to do is to fill out the worksheet. This is a suggested thing. It is on the same place as, uh, as the videos. So under resources, writing assignment help, unit three, it's a suggested worksheet. Um, oh my goodness, what did I call it? Performing ethical research. It is there, I believe, as a Word document that you can save you can print it out, you can save it and just type it up on your computer. It is not for points. There are no points related to it, but I think it would be really, really helpful to do. Let me know if you found it helpful. Um, you can email it to me if you'd like, but you don't need to. So fill out that worksheet. Um, brainstorming is due Sunday the 29th. That box is open on Turn It In as you're watching this. So I put it to, to be set for a Wednesday morning, very early Wednesday morning. <laughs> uh, so please let me know if you have questions. I'll be going through the discussion boards tomorrow and Thursday and all that. Stay safe. I hope you have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. I will talk to you next Monday. Bye.